Hey everybody, welcome back to Bay Area Preps HQ, the high school home for Mercury News and East Bay Times high school sports coverage. Here with Mike Lefkow, Darren Sabedra. Mike, are you going to kill me again this week? I was 9-0 and last week, wasn't I? 9-0. Uh, and we're, we're back for our weekly predictions. It's week five. Week four, Mike Lefkow picked Half Moon Bay. They got the win. They did, convincingly. They picked right? McClymans. <clears throat> they got the win. Convincing. Well, not as convincing. Not as convincingly, but still, you, <clears throat> still you were nine and zero. I mean, here I was seven and two, fifteen and four for the two rounds, and you are standing at sixteen and one. Wow! With like a what is it like a nine forty winning percentage? Yeah, something I crazy. It out. Something crazy. But anyhow, we are on to week number five. Week number five, and we are picking ten games that you picked. You picked the ten games. I picked the ten that games we're this, week, this week. So starting with. Cal High, which is up to number 18 in our rankings. Yes. According to your little notes here. And they are going to be at Heritage, which is coming off a big win over Amador Valley, their first win of the season. Uh, California's had an extra week to prepare because they had a bye last week. And you are taking California. And so am I. Yep. I'm predicting 30 to 10 over uh, Heritage. And you are predicting. I'm taking Cal 28-24. I think it's going to be a close game. All right. Uh, this is a team coming up in this next uh, this next pick that I have uh, struck out with two weeks in a row. Uh, two weeks ago, I picked Amador Valley over Campolindo and Campolindo won. Last week, I pre predicted Campolindo over McClymans right. and McClymans won. This week, Campolindo's at Hayward and I am taking Campolindo. Hayward's undefeated, but I'm taking Campo 35-17. Yeah, I'm taking Campo 249-28. I think uh, camp was just a little bit too strong. All right. Uh, moving on to the Carlmont Palo Alto game. Palo Alto coming in after uh, two consecutive wins. They opened the season with a loss to St. Ignatius. They're going to be going up against Carlmont, uh, which is 2-1 and one and putting up a lot of points in their last couple of games. Right? They are. 69 last week. 69 last week. I'm predicting <clears throat> they're only going to score 21 this week and lose to Palo Alto 34-21. I'm picking a wild one, 51 for Palo Alto, 33 for Carlmont. Wow, that is a wild one. That is a wild one. Moving on, uh, McClymans will be at home going up against Downey of Modesto, a team that's 3-1 and one on the season, uh, but giving up almost 40 points a game. How is yeah. that even possible? They're 3-1? and one? They're scoring almost 40 points a game. Well, they're going up against a really tough defense right. on Friday night, and I'm predicting McClymans to win 34-12. to 12. I'm picking Mac 30 to 7. Very nice. Uh, Homestead at Kings Academy. Pete Lavarado's uh, Kings Academy team off to a 2 0 start. Uh, going up against a 2 1 Homestead team. I'm taking TKA in this one, 34 23. Yeah, I went with a low score in this one. I think TK, TKA 27 to 3. Over Homestead. A uh, rivalry game in this next one, Los Gatos, ranked number 17 by us, will be at Saratoga. Both teams coming in at 3-0. and Saratoga putting up a lot of points. But I think Los Gatos is going to be way too much for Saratoga. 44-19. I'm going with Los Gatos, 34-14. Los Gatos has played a tough schedule so far. They have played a tough schedule. Wow. Well. Okay. <laughs> comparatively. All right. All right. San Ramon Valley, two and one, barely squeaked by Antioch last week. Is that correct? Yeah, 10-9. 10 to 9. They will be at home to play, or they will be on the road to play Freedom, which is 0 and 4. Freedom team that just a couple years ago was the second best team in all of the NCS. Right. Uh, but, you know, they've lost four close games. And uh, go ahead and with your okay, score. Okay, I'm going to predict San Ramon Valley to win this one 20 to 14. And I see here. Somebody's picking freedom. I'm going to go with freedom to break their four game losing streak. 21 to 20. You hear that freedom fans. You're going to get your first win. According to the man who does not miss picks. Correct. Well, <laughs> so far. Skyline is three and zero, and they're going to be playing against Incinel, which is three and one. Uh, according to your notes here, Incinel's three victories are by a combined score of 142 to zero. Yeah, they win convincingly, don't they? <laughs> yeah, we're and but I'm picking a close game this week, 21-17 over Skyline. No, I think Encinal is going to win this one fairly easily, 47-24. Okay, very good. 
Now here's where we differ. Um, Liberty, which fell to number four in our rankings, number four, after uh, squeaking by Monta Vista, they've had some close calls, Clayton Valley, Oakdale, now Monta Vista. They're gonna be at home against Cardinal Newman. In most cases, I would take Liberty in this one, but with Cardinal Newman having an extra week to prepare, I'm taking Cardinal Newman in the upset, 24-23, which really is, I mean, it's a five versus four game in our rankings, right, so it's right. not a huge upset, but I'm taking Cardinal Newman, 24-23, I think the Lions are going to pull this one out, 21-16, and remain undefeated. Wow. Very good. Very good. Well, you know what? You pick them all right, so I would probably take it to the bank that Liberty's going to win this game. I think it's going to be a good game. I think the Lions might come out a little motivated after falling in the poll. All right. And, of course, we cannot pick games that we're covering, so you cannot pick the Wilcox at Pittsburgh game. I'm predicting Pittsburgh to win 44 to 20 as uh, Paul M. Rosa dealing with that groin injury from Wilcox probably will not play in this game. So I am taking Pittsburgh to win handily, even though they're ranked one spot lower than Wilcox. Wilcox coming in two and one ranked eighth and Pittsburgh coming in three and one ranked ninth. And lastly, Buchanan at De La Salle. I'll be there. Well, last I, year was close. Yes, it was. But I went over the uh, Buchanan roster and didn't see five-star running back Kendall Milton on there. I could have missed him. But anyway, the Georgia hard commit. Hard to miss. Hard to miss. <laughs> I did not see the Georgia commit on their roster. And uh, no Milton, no chance for Buchanan. I'm going De La Salle 35-7. All right. And uh, let's. I hope to gain some ground. I'm only going to be able to gain two games if I get them all right. Yeah, but you're not that far behind. It's still uh, early in the season. It's still early. It's, we're only in round three of this competition. That That's is true. for, we keep writing bragging rights, but is it going to be for something more than bragging rights? I think we got to put more than bragging rights on it, I think so. Maybe, maybe our audience can tell us what uh, what we should be playing for. Hey, let them tell them. The, yeah. the champion. Uh, you guys suggest. What's your Twitter handle? My Twitter is Leftwich. 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 L E F T. W I C H. And mine is at Darren Saavedra, just right. like the spelling on my name. Be sure to chime in. Maybe you'll tell us what we should be playing for here. I think we're going to get some prizes uh, that are yeah, going to be a little outlandish. Yeah, I think we might get some outlandish calls. Uh, anything else before we wrap it up? We just picked 10 games here. Um, anything of concern? Any surprises? I mean, you called Half Moon Bay last week. I don't think you called 40 to nothing, but. No, I thought it was going to be a close game, but. I think Half Moon Bay might be back. They're looking really they, good. They are looking really good. You almost called the De La Salle score. De La Salle needed one more touchdown, but Justin Ellenbaugh decided to take a knee there at midfield with a yeah, minute I'm gonna to go. Have to have a little talk it was 42. <laughs> you picked 48 27, uh, De La, and they won 42 27. Yeah, yeah. But I picked Liberty two weeks in a row. I predict, predicted their exact score. I had Liberty 24, and then I had them with 28 against uh, Clayton Valley. And last week they won 24 21 over Monta Vista. I did predict Monta Vista to have 17 in that game. So I didn't call it completely, but kind of nailing Liberty a little bit. So we'll see. I, I think they're going to hope for more than 23 this week. Of course, we've got a few of the uh, South Bay teams off this week. Uh, the West Cal's not playing. Right. A lot of the CCS teams taking this week off. They've played three games now. This is their bye week before league play starts next week. So next week we will have some uh, interesting matchups, including um, St. Francis going to Valley Christian, which will be a rematch of their section championship game last year. Right which was a double, I think a double overtime, at least one overtime. And I saw Sarah last week, and yes, they are very impressive. They moved up to number two in our rankings. Uh, I mean, they are. They're good. They're, they're really, real good. They're really good. Yeah, Everybody I talked to said players. they are really good. I've seen them. They're really good. So anyhow, that is a wrap here from Walnut Creek. Be sure to check out our coverage at mercurynews.com, yep. eastbaytimes.com. Make sure to sign up for that digital season pass. It is how much a day? 16 cents a 16 day. cents. That's one that. six. We need digital subscriptions to keep this thing alive. Be sure to sign up for that digital subscription. One six. 16 cents a day. Maybe that's what somebody can buy us if they uh, oh. in the competition. I don't want a digital. I have a digital subscription. Well, so do I, but I mean, okay. hey. Okay. All right. Well, that's a wrap here from Walnut Creek where leaves are falling on our head. That's it. Okay. <laughs>